Hello YouTube! Today we got a little deck profile here and we're going to be starting with a new deck I think is going to be very powerful, very powerful. Uh, the DDD other deck, other than, other known as the Different Dimension Demon deck. And we, this is a fiend based deck, Pendulum, so it got a lot of the new stuff coming at it right away. So we're going to get started with, we're going to be talking about DD Night uh, howling. Basically, when it's summoned, you can special summon in DD from your graveyard. It's a level 3 tuner, and so, with that in mind, you can pretty much revive any of your things. Mostly, you only go to level 7 synchrones if they made, like, a level, a rank 3 XYZ, or a level 10 fiend that you could actually use with him. I would actually probably start using some of that because then it would give me even more potential and crazier plays. But yeah, this guy is definitely a powerful house because he just revives. Um, you, you do have the downside if he go if that monster gets destroyed, you'll take a thousand. But you can normally avoid that with this guy. Just because of that tuner effect, you have all those little effects that you are allowed to avoid with him. So, I mean, he really isn't easy. Next, we got DD Lift, or however. Basically, what it does is you can, when it's summoned, um, you, uh, normal or special, you, re you add a DD monster from your pendulum or your um, graveyard back to your hand. Only can be used uh, once per turn. So, let's think about that real quick, real quick. Um, that means we can get our pendulum scale set up. That means we can get our guys from grave. We have two evil hero and frontal ganger. Basically, since they're all fiends, give them that double attack. Double attack, always great. Can normally uh, win games with this two attacks uh, with one monster. So that would make ganger obviously a perfect choice. Now we have Duga. Duga, the reason why Duga is in here, it's a rock, 19 attack points. Yeah, I know, rock, rock, rock. Um, during the end phase, when it gets destroyed by your opponent card effect, you get to uh, add a monster from your deck to your hand who is in the same level as one you control or in your graveyard. Now, since Pendulum go to the extra deck, I figure it actually gives you a pretty good shot of adding another Pendulum monster, even in late in the duel. So that's why I put him in here, since I figure it can work that way. Most people avoid destroying them with card effects, so I'd never get the chance to see it. <laughs> but that's besides the point. He still had that 19 attack points. Great for the dark fusion in that I put in this deck. And that really why Doga is in here. Just for the standpoint of dark fusion. Now we got two free DD Cerberus. Um, has a few effects. When it's Pendulum Summon, uh, you can use it. It has a Pendulum Scale of 6, 18 attack points, um, 600 defense. Um, it's a Fiend, and basically, once per turn, you can target a DD monster, make it a level 4, and it will gain 400 attack and defense. And it discards a Pendulum Summon, you basically get to add um, a Convent card from your uh, graveyard to your hand. So basically, recover those convent cards, give you a lot more control in the duel. Um, so obviously, it can be used for a good last turn card. So that where this card is going to come in handy for helping you is that level four, all those things. Now we have DDD, um, a magical actual keeper. Um, basically, main point I use this guy is because he is a rank ten in the pendulum scale. There's pretty much nothing else that needs to be said about that. That's because it lets you go through most of You can only pendulum summon uh, DD monsters. Kind of remind me of the, uh, what you call, the, uh, Quill Arts or whatever. They're, they keep on changing their names. Um, during each of your standby phases, you reduce this card uh, rank by, I, or uh, pendulum scale by two, and then you destroy all monsters that aren't DDs that have a uh, scale less than him during the standby phase. So, pretty simple, easy to avoid that effect. And his other effect is when this card is, uh, you can, then he has a monster effect, which, uh, you can use, 
uh, when you summon, you can target one DDD or convict card you control, add it right back to your hand. This is actually good because the convent cards can make you take a thousand during each of your standby phases. So it's pretty easy to avoid a lot of the convent cards uh, negative side with this deck and gain tons of pluses and advantage. I run free of him just because, I mean, level one, zero, zero, mm, not that impressive, but you mostly use him for that. And then we have DDD, the Madro Actro game. Um, basically, uh, Level 10, 0, 0, and Pendulum Scale 1. Now, the first part of the Pendulum sc Scale effect when he's a Pendulum Monster is basically the reverse of a uh, Keeper there. So he uh, gets his uh, rank, po his uh, Pendulum Scale goes up, and he destroys Monster Weaker. And then he has a discard effect, is during either player turns, you can add one common card um, from your. Uh, field to your hand so not too bad to add to return a ddd or a convent back to your hand if they have something negative going attached to them so another good monster definitely have some play and here we go uh so, yeah, mostly you use your low rank pendulums here, and there are only a few, there are only a few high ranked. They'll make some more eventually. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, we have DDD Lancer, the, uh, I forget his name, but he is actually pretty good. Um, 26 attacks, 13 defense, pendulum scale free. When you take damage from a card effect, you can destroy this card, and that effect is changed into increasing your life points instead, so you basically get don't take any damage, and then all further damage you would take is now negated. And then, he actually has another effect, which is like a gorge, which is when you take uh, damage um, by card effect again, because they say, except during damage stuff, you can special summon and gain life points equal to it. And if you take any more damage further, you and you cannot take any more damage further this turn while he's in any more uh, effect damage further this turn while he's in your monster card zone. So he kind of reminds me completely of Gores, except for he's a pendulum. Another good monster has a lot of little play to him. And here we go into the boss of this deck. Uh, DDD, the, um, I forget his name, but he's basically Armageddon. Um, you don't really want to use him for a pendulum scale. Four, 3,000 attack, um, 12 defense. Once return, you can target one DD monster you control. It will gain 800 attack points. So that's a pendulum effect, not that effective. And his monster effect, once return, if a monster you control is destroyed by any way, um, he gained that mantra attack points, and he cannot attack directly when he used that effect, but the attack increased elasticity and phase, so you can pretty much overpower every mantra with him. The goal would be really to just get two of these out, because then your opponent would realize they have to get a mantra with over 6 out in attack points. And his other effect is he cannot be destroyed by spell and trap cards that do not target him. So, they're pretty hard to get rid of because Dark Hole doesn't even work on him. And let's see. We should be heading over to. That's pretty much the main point of this monster. Powerful. Can be defeated. They're doing that with a lot of Yu Gi Oh cards on giving the boss monsters extra defense. And our next one Dark Calling. It's a fiend deck. I have to put my dark calling in my fiend decks. Evil hero, dark guy, that's too good of a card not to pass up. And now we have Convent of Hellgate. Basically, um, this card is a uh, fire formation tanky for the DD deck. Except for you can use it repeatedly, but you use it repeatedly, you take a thousand each turn. So. It's pretty much it works the exact same way. You can add whoever you need with this. Because this deck has a lot of searchability, a lot of control aspect in it. And this is just one of those cards that allow you to speed up, look through all your decks. 
and look for your deck. So, I run this card at 3 because I want to start off with it as soon as possible. Next we have um, Convent of the Swamp King. Basically, you use this for fusing. You can um, fuse from your hand or you can ban the CDD monsters to summon the uh, fusion. Uh, a fiend uh, DDD fusion and this card can only be used for fiend fusion the only good fiend fusion really is the DDD so I can't see you running this in any other deck I only run two just because it's kind of a quick way to play this card um, and let's see our next so that's basically how this card works. You do take that thousand during your stand by phase. All the convent cards uh, share that effect so far. Next we have a uh, convent of uh, the. Uh, uh, I forget this one. But this one has another good effect. Is you can send a DDD card or a convent card from your hand to the graveyard to destroy something. So that means you get the target cards and you get to blow up stuff. And its other effect is during your opponent's turn, all your fiend monsters gain a thousand attack points. So yeah, that that's a even bigger plus is now they become a thousand points stronger. You get to blow up cards, and of course during your standby phase, you're going to take a thousand. But that's a small price to play for just a huge plus like that. And I run free dead. Then we have Lisa Leader. This card is basically the emergency provision in the deck. Destroy all convent cards you control, draw a card for each of them, and gain a thousand life points. This is one of the cards that make this deck so good, it's almost broken. Since you could play like two free convent cards, don't have to take the free thousand, instead gain free thousand, then draw free cards. You're just gaining even more advantage early on with this trap card. And don't even worry about the common card going to the graveyard because all their extra deck ones recover it. And here's another thing to recover it is um, DDD uh, Recruiter. If your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can target DD or common cards in your graveyard and that is equal to the difference and add them to your hand. Now, what I like about this is you actually don't have to control a DD monster to use this. So that means your opponent can have like three monsters, you have zero. Add free cards. That is free cards, free advantage, and getting you back in the game. I use two because it's kind of excessive and I normally keep my advantage early on. And then we have our last trap card which is DDD uh, Resourcing Maneuvering. Um, basically this card is like a pot of avarice except for you get to control with DD monsters you add to your hand. So you re return free DD cards from your uh, field hand, I mean from your field graveyard or pendulum zone to your deck. Then you add two pendulum, add two DD monsters from your deck to your hand. Simple point with that: you pretty much get to control what cards are in your hand. Um, you can recover your pendulums that you got in your graveyard because you use them for X Y Zs. So, I mean, this deck has, like, no punishment for going for XYZ, Synchrones, Fusions, everything. Fusing from your hand. That's what makes the deck great. It can go through all that pluses. Now we have DDD, Alexander, the Gale Overlord. Now, this one actually does not recover one of the common cards. Kind of sucks. But his effect is more linear than the other. If a DDD mantra you control is normal or special summon, you can um, special summon. You can target a level four or lower DD monster in your graveyard and special summon it. You can only use that effect once per turn. So he's a decent level seven um, fiend monster that the deck can play. Then we have two Chaos King Arch Fiend. Basically, use this to get rid of problematic monsters since at 26 attack points that make it so it's their defense or attack is lower than him, he will win. That's pretty much what Chaos King is used for. And why he still is a pretty good competitive card. So that's where I used to him. And then we have Dark Highlander because he's pretty easy to summon and he shuts down Synchron decks or equip spell cards, which there aren't too many of those, but you never know, you never know. 
But Dark Highlander is still a very decent synchro to summon. It does see it's kind of hard. 28 attack points and, for, and forbid synchro summon. That does make him good. Now we have three DDDs the Trojan, the Blaze Overlord. Basically, when a DDD monster is special summon, you get the special summon a DDD monster from your graveyard. And if this card is destroyed while he's in your possession, you get to add a common card from your graveyard to your hand. Yeah, this guy has all that effect. And then you can even ban this card later to summon another Fears. And this is what makes this card so amazing. Is he's is almost a completely recyclable card. Several times. And of course, my favorite, Evil Hero Dark Guy. Like I said, all Fiend decks need to use this guy just because he gives them so much advantage early and late in the duel. Mm. I mean, I really, I had explained this card so many times, I feel like I can't even explain it anymore than what I had been. Now we'll be going to the XYZs. Um, since it's a, you actually don't really want to use the rank gates because you want those uh, triple D, the Armageddon on the field because their effect is really good. But you, sevens are good to summon. So we have Big Eye, first one. He's actually not that hard to summon, especially since you have like Free Pendulum. Um, Draco Sack, and again, another easy card to play. I have to be changing this extra deck a little bit and make sure the extra deck is more fluid and more cards I can summon. I want to make sure it's out of max. Uh, number 66, Master of Blades. Again, a good card. Just can protect things. Ooh, uh, yeah, I had a little issue there. Um, let me uh, fix that. There we go. We're back in the game. Um, and here the last card is DDD, the Wave uh, Overlord. Basically, um, what I like about this card is I don't really use his uh, Detach effect because it does special summon monsters. And I never get around to having him on the field like that. Is when he gets destroyed... I mean, actually, when he gets sent to the graveyard, he allows you to add a convent card from your deck to your hand. Now, that is huge just in the standpoint of you get a high attack point monster, and when that monster eventually dies, you get to search your deck and get even more play and start up going. So, that's why I think this deck has a lot of potential. It really can take out a lot of situations. So, I hope you guys enjoy. I'll catch you guys again. Have a great day. Bye.